Maverick is a god. Yeah, I'm responding to like 10 minutes ago. These guys that I mentioned, like Precipic, Lobster, Maverick, Nick, Presto, Rattling Bones, and Silverfuse, these are like some of the smartest people I've met in like in card games. They actually, they have some like, they're like real, real big brains. Like everyone contributed and we all, you know, we, it's, I, I, I couldn't have done it without those guys really. Okay, so we're starting round four. I'm going to be against BBG. Um, so the four semifinalists are me, Hyped, Soulless, and BBG. And I start round four against BBG. Now this is single elimination at this point, so... I mean, anything could happen. Single elim is a bloodbath. He's gonna start with the Tempo Sedge deck. It's pretty like super standard, nothing really spicy, but just making sure I'm remembering all the options. Round one, fight. Pretty happy to double keep Sentry here. Mostly we're just kind of like trying to stay alive and beef up. We hit the Brown while mulliganing two cards like any good player would. I don't think letting him hired gun my disciple really changes anything. This is like almost a consideration to do some like cheeky passes or play like this guy, but I'm really not too concerned with anything like that happening. Oh, this BBG guy is a fucking roper, huh? It's not quite worth using like a weird fury on that. It's like, it's way too adorable. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, the only important thing is like slamming Braum on four and then like, just sort of like shoving, shoving it in him, right? I mean, I always like curving out the brown here. If he passes, I'm always gonna pass back. It's the easiest pass of my entire career. Good memes. <clears throat> so that pass is a hard representative Fury of the North, basically. It's, I think, really hard for him to pass like that if he doesn't have Fury of the North. So Navigator with Fury is actually a little spooky here, potentially. So he should do a scout attack. I should do a Fury block with Braum into the kindly tavern keeper between his two attacks is probably my play. Whoa. Wow, that would be weird. Wow, I kind of want to fury block that. I don't know, I mean it's such a loose fury. It stops his entire attack. I'm not really playing for like long term value by doing that but I'm keeping my health like quite high. It's kind of insane to do that, really. I should just like Tavern Keeper my face like a normal human being. This is like the normal human being play. So he knows I have Fury and we know he has Fury. And that's just kind of like Freljord Maris. Taps under Fury leaves him like slightly vulnerable. I'm pretty okay with that. I don't know. I don't think there's a reason like to play the sentry there. I don't think it can really make too big of a difference. We just want to make sure we have responses to anything he could really be trying to do here. So if he has like the rare double fury hand, we can still just counter with our own double fury. Wow. I'll slow roll the second fury, actually. Come on, show it.
The thing is, that would be rude if he didn't know it was me, but the thing is, BBG knows me well enough to know that if I pour a emote there, that means I always have it. So it's not actually a slow roll. It would be a slow roll if it was anyone else. So the Sejuani level is definitely going to be sort of like the potentially scary thing happening here. Hmm. I don't think I'm too concerned with this. I can't really terribly mind these drags. So you always have to be afraid of the Riptide Rex. I know the funny thing is, playing Leviathan first, I think it makes me pretty safe to the Rex. I don't think I'm really too concerned. Rex is definitely going to be pretty nasty, but if anything, I'd rather have the Leviathan come out before the Rex rather than after. He'd have to like have an Omega high roll to like kill the Leviathan here. And it lowers the odds of him killing like stuff like Braum and Swain just by having extra unit. Okay, so that's quite interesting. So he's not on it. Our Swain doesn't really have the ability to go face here, which is alright. And he doesn't really have combat tricks, he's used two Furies. So I think just like cleaning this off is fine. Are we like... We might want to intentionally keep our Leviathan's health like high here. I mean he really isn't gonna have like crazy combat tricks. I feel like the Leviathan does actually get a swing here, honestly. I don't know, it's kind of trolly, like, potentially letting it die. Like, kind of really trolly. Like, kind of like the stupidest thing I've ever done. Sort of trolly. Yeah. a sick play. So we need to play our second Swain here. Really, at this point in the time, our biggest problem is like the Swain level up being really slow. A funny interaction here is like... Interesting. I mean, using Sentry on this is just completely necessary. It's like the easiest play of my life, because it also like enables the second flock as well. But he has some, he has some pretty good like vulnerables here. <sighs> it's a little loose to keep both Swains alive. So third Fury of the North is a little awkward, but it's such low odds, and it's not like we don't have the re counterplay here. Okay, so this is leveling up our Swain in a way that's like, yeah, Culling Strike, that's a sick play, dude. Nice. Nice play, man. That's such a crazy punish. Holy sh... Like... I mean, what can I say, man? BBG is a sick player. I mean, you can't really expect anything otherwise there, right? Jesus Christ. This is so trolly. He has a really hard time actually representing too much this full swing. I think I'm actually okay shipping the Leviathan attack here. I don't know, his health is a bit like low. Brutality. His hand was pretty bad there. He like didn't have Sejuani or Rex. He had a lot of like early game tools that sort of like... I mean obviously he nabbed some hilarious stuff but it wasn't like a great hand overall. Wow, this is a tough mulligan. I mean, Trump Womp into Island Navigator on 4 is actually really toxic. Like, really, really toxic. Round two. Fight. I think this is a full keep. I think the Key Guardian will invariably hit value in a hand like this. It's a little risky, but I'm happy to full keep here. 
But yeah, Trump Womp's stat line into Island Navigators is actually just so insane. So it's really hard not to keep this. If he passes after pausing, that can be a tell he's got hard gun. So he's got Butcher here. Oh, it's just Merchant. Never mind. So this left card is from us. Could be anything. We have a good stat line into Merchant, which is pretty great. I would have hated to have seen a, a Butcher there. Looks like his hand is bad again. Like a good hand doesn't play out like this. No reason to attack into a potential Fury. I'm happy to burn one if, he, if we're in chill mode here. I really lose nothing by burning here, really. I'm liking my position so far. Deny is pretty... I mean, it's literally a dead card in this matchup. Like, actually literally dead, which is kind of funny. I mean, Key Guardian is a free cast, but without a second cast, we're not getting a Salamander anyway. It's just like the free cycle. It's too hard to decline the free cycle. I think Vi kind of has to make the most sense as a target. That's an interesting draw. We're about to get the double mushroom next turn, especially if he develops Islander. So I'll keep this in hand. I'd love to see an Islander here. This is a snap play. At two mana, his deck is like purely proactive. He has really nothing at two mana. So I'll have a second attack here and that'll be fine. Seems like the best play is to Thermo the Blade Scout. It's a little aggressive. Thermo might hit higher value in this matchup, it might have to. His attack kind of sucks at this point. Especially if he tries to swing in with everything. He can't really give up the attack. I can't really be too protective of my HP here. So the pass always has to be correct. Yeah, and this kind of looks like how he has to attack here. I mean, he kind of puts us on claws, that's why he's not, like, attacking with more. Which makes sense, because he kind of has to do that. I'm basically making the call that saving the value from Thermo. I, I just expect Thermo to hit higher value ranges than this. I mean, I can take a pass here for Vi. Vi with Key Guardian. Does he have, like... I don't know, I mean he could he could exploit me with a pass back potentially. Cause like he does have a bit of a developed board. He doesn't necessarily have to play into this. I think it's just safer to play the Vi, honestly. It's like it's too cheeky to try to pass here, really. Just because like he's not burning more than us he's burning a little bit less than us. He's got he doesn't have like a super big hand, and he already owns the board. So you're sort of, like, turning on a little bit of Fury value, but really not much of anything. This 4-3 should have a free attack here. I mean, we can play two spellcasts here. I wouldn't really hate it. Mushrooms early doesn't really do too much for us. I think the biggest thing is just like potentially taking zero damage to his next attack is actually pretty big. If I do like Mushroom Cloud and Thermo, what that means is suddenly he can't threaten to actually deal any damage on the next attack on his open attack. Which is a really big deal, because like stopping the plunder triggers is really nice. And the, so the question is do I need to hit more value out of Thermo? I mean his plunder triggers are just not necessarily doing that much here. We have a pretty good counter to a Sejuani with like Thermo Beam. It's just the fact that we don't have like a Palm or anything that makes our Thermo Beam a little premium in the sands. And he's thinking about Warning Shot me. That's his only potential option here is a Warning Shot. I don't know how I read this Warning Shot. He has to have a second one I think to think about doing it. Or like a Yordle Grifter at least. And yeah, I'm just not afraid enough of his open attack here. Whereas, like, the Thermo feels like it just got paid. And the Vi is actually getting attack on this turn, which is kind of funny. So, I mean, his deck doesn't really have a response here. All he has is Fury, Sejuani's Fury, and 
Having no spells just means we can go very proactive on our removal like that, and there's really nothing he can do to stop it. I mean, killing the merchant is probably slightly worth it. The blade scout probably matters less than both of them right now. Okay. Sure. And again, I mean, his deck just can't really do anything reactively. It's just pure units. He only has, like, one spell in the entire deck, and that's Fury of the North. Of course, Warning Shot, but that doesn't really influence the board, right? It just can enable certain things. So here the mushrooms are starting to hilariously enough generate value. Which is pretty pog. I mean, he can't actually remove Karma. <sighs> I mean, we have to put him on Rexing. I can't really Karma this early, it's just a little trolly. Our hand's actually not great here, we need like one draw card. It's a little too early to just sort of like run out of resources otherwise. So when Vi levels up, does she get like plus one health? I don't play this card. It looks like she gets plus one health when she levels, so it's probably worth it leveling her here. I can maybe force a pretty awkward fury from him. This is a really feels bad fury for him that he might have to take. I think I would have to take it if I was him. That being said, I mean, our hand isn't really good here. If he plays like a Riptide Rex next turn, it could actually be a little spooky. Like, we need like Static Shock or Rummage or... We need something to generate cards. Our top deck value is ahead of his, in theory. This is kind of good top deck value. It's sort of a meme here, though. Drawing the random spell is actually really kind of good on these sorts of boards. And he can't- this is like the one turn where he has a pretty hard time punishing this. So I, I feel quite forced into this, actually. <sighs> That's a throw. I didn't play around Hired Gun. That was like- that was- that was just a big throw, actually. It was the biggest throw I've done this set. Oops. So he has an easy time starting with Razor Scale here. But yeah, I could have played Karma like after the combat. This is one- there's one card in his deck that I didn't play around. So this kind of makes us a bit top deck reliant, which I don't really want to be here. be forced into this. I mean, unless he's dumb, it's not like I can keep my karma alive here. I already misplayed it. So yeah, basically we're just looking to draw some like some draw power here. Static shock, rummage, uh, deep meditation even would be fine. Probably not a good enough hand to hit an Ezreal, but something like Ezreal is kind of okay. Will definitely doesn't hit this hand very hard. If he's got like a Riptide Rex, he should just be able to close out the game at this point. It shouldn't be that hard. So yeah, it looks like we lost this. That was just kind of like if I just hadn't misplayed the Karma. We were probably ahead. It's definitely like still losable, but it felt like we we had a pretty good position if I hadn't misplayed the karma. So at this point, we just have to be like thinking about what our what our out here really is. I mean, I can try to threaten the Sejuani. So I think I have to gotcha on the stack to bait out the Fury of the North. I guess a warning shot. Oh man, a warning shot would be good too. Was it just shot? He played one shot really early, right? That was like to start off the game. He's running three shots. 
Like, if I gotcha and he does a warning shot, that's pretty sad for me. But if I gotcha and then he uses, like, Fury of the North or Sejuani's Fury of the North, and then we will. That's pretty great. So this kind of means he doesn't have a warning shot if he's dragging this one instead. We do sort of, like, need to keep these mushrooms so our Ezreal could represent an out, maybe. I could see that. That's pretty fascinating. Yeah, he's got to drag the other way now if he's going to do that. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense, right? And here, I mean, I think we're always on Will of Ionia. Should have no choice. So our Ezreal's 5 out of 8. I mean, we have the ability to end the game, like, really quickly with him with this hand, but we still need, like, a level up. We do have a solid hand as long as we draw, like, one or two things. We just need to draw, like, Rummage, Palm, Static, Ezreal, like, that kind of thing. Just, like, a double drop puts us in a pretty good spot. Deep med is pretty good. Might be, like, top of our range. Thermal Beam and Gacha are pretty busted here. Well, I mean, I am a good player, so I think I would draw this Thermal Beam of the Gacha here. That is true. It's pretty easy for him to be on, like, second Sedge here. So now this is quite interesting. This attack is either like genius or really, really throwy. Oh man. Oh, that's crazy. He's used two warning shots. He's legitimately used two warning shots. Like, no way he's got the third, right? He's actually used two. He hasn't played a single Ural Grifter. These were two like actual warning shots. Just his other fury. That's a lot of furies. Oh. Nice play, dude. Yeah, and the butcher is lethal here without us top decking it out. Hmm, rummage could hit an out. We actually have a couple of outs here. It's like palm or will. It would be really sad drawing the Ezreal now. I don't know, I think that attack probably was just kind of like... Too risky for little upside. Like, we kind of low rolled, but there's probably not enough reason to take that attack in the first place, honestly. And that, like, that, that card makes it really hard to have, like, an out here. Got our Ezreal 7 out of 8. If we hit... There's no hit that rewards us for keeping these clouds. It's just impossible. So we need like a palm here to be good. We hit palm and will like any good player would. God, are we actually not good here? This is so sad. Do we not have a way to survive this turn? I messed that up. I think like I have to do it the other way around and then try to like top deck something. I don't know. That's a really weird one. So we play, we misplay this game like fairly hard. I think at the end, like we're pretty much can't matter what we do. But the the karma misplay lost us the game. Like that was really bad. Okay. So let me be right back before we get into the next game. That game was uh that one was definitely a throw for sure. We're starting our game three here. And it's single Elim, so if we lose this, we're out of the tournament. He's running three Rangers resolves. That's pretty interesting. 
I think I'm down to keep a double Ezreal hands here, actually. Final round, fight! Because the second Ezreal just ends up turning into a Mystic Shot anyway. Wow, that's a bad turn to draw gacha. It feels so bad drawing gacha on turn one, man. Okay, so we're looking at like I, Ezreal. If it's a War Chef's here, of course I'm forced to thermo it. I think. I mean, if it's like a Bright Steel here, then I have a pretty easy Eye of the Dragon into Thermo, maybe. I do value keeping his board, like, kind of narrow. We are going to 4 mana next turn. So I feel like opens War Chefs, and if I play this... Well, we're going to 5. We do have, like, potentially Gacha into Thermo, into Claws. So I think this is okay to just play out here, actually. Okay, so this is the easiest gacha of my entire life. We just need to kill the Zed in a way that, like, Ranger's Resolve doesn't protect. This truly is an easy gacha. And his attack actually feels, like, quite bad. Because, like, he sort of has to just sacrifice the tracker to the Eye of the Dragon or something. It's unfortunate we don't get to be greedy with our second Eye, but, I mean, we'll take it. That's okay. I don't like Thermo Ink here, because we have the other Eye and the Ezreal. Ooh, man. Oh, man, this is such a weird turn! I could do anything here. There's so many options, they're all good. I mean, getting the Ezreal out is pretty powerful. Getting the Chump Wump out is pretty powerful. But I can't play Eye of the Dragon plus both of those. I think it's kind of insane to not play Ezreal here. It doesn't even get punished by, like, single combat or anything. Or even, like, enables a resolve. Like, you don't have to worry about enabling resolve as long as you just don't let two things die on the same turn, really. We just need to make sure we're keeping his board narrow against, like, Bannerman and stuff like that. Wow. This isn't an option. What is this? Combat? Pursuit? Yeah, he's on no option there. And there's like an almost cheeky Thermo Beam, that's just a shit play there. So this one's quite interesting. I mean, Thermoing the Garen is like really amazing, unless his card is Resolve, in which case I kind of lose the game. We also like lose a lot of value to single combat. So overall, Thermoing the Garen sort of seems like a mega throw. I don't know. I mean, sometimes you can, like, win the game by doing it, but I, I think it sort of has to be, like, a bit of a hyper throw here. Unfortunately, I can't play the double spell here, either. I don't know how concerned I am with the Garen, really. I think it's too important to double trigger spells here. I think there's no way around it. Pursuit's interesting. Okay. Man, if this hand wasn't like two thermos, I'd actually feel so good here. I don't know, Pursuit makes him like a little bit vulnerable. It just comes down to owning the board, I think. Man, if this if this wasn't like two thermos, I'd actually feel so good here. Yeah, I mean, I have no issue with this. I get, like, absolutely blown out by Resolve if I try to use, like, a weird Static Shock this turn. I'd rather not get, like, absolutely blown out by Resolve. 
If he has a second pursuit here, then it's like a little awkward doing this, but I don't know. I mean, I'll just block the Garen, whatever. <laughs> Do I mind that? I don't know. I think I'm fine. So we're bricking resolve like hardcore. Like, it's actually really. His his resolve is like kind of poop here. Okay. He's got a second Garen, and now we just kind of have to do that all over again. Ezreal is a bit of a nut draw here. So, again, the only important thing is just to make sure that we're making Resolve feel kind of like a worthless card. And I think it's pretty easy to do that. He's skipping this attack, which I think he basically has to do. I don't know, do I actually get punished by not having Salamanders next turn? It sort of feels like that's not really a big deal. So I mean, he should kind of have to play out Resolve here, which I don't really mind at this point. It's like, I'm just trying to level my Ezreal anyway. This is like sort of a slow roll. So yeah, we played this set pretty horribly. Did I misplay this game? I don't actually I don't remember. Um Really, really brain dead play in the last game. So I'm not happy with the. Uh, I'm not happy with this set at all. No good. We have to play a lot better. I was just like throwing left and right. That was probably like, I don't know. Honestly, we played it about as well as set one. We've only played one set well today. We played no. We've played four sets. That means we played one and a half sets well. But yeah, I didn't really play very well. My lineup was just better than his. That's all. Sorry, I'm a bit of a downer when I win. <laughs> you should see me when I lose! 